one thing that I'll do as a judge that is fair and impartial is I'll make sure that I keep cases moving. Cases that languish in courts for years and years and years, put on whole people's calendars and their wallets, and even their lives. Folks, ask yourself this question. If you are in a lawsuit, or God forbid a divorce, or charges are pending, what kind of mentality, what kind of experience, what kind of principles do you want the person in that black robe up on that bench to have? And that's where competence comes in. That's where the fairness comes in. I've been trying cases for 24 years. I've been defending people who've been sued. I've been fighting frivolous lawsuits for over 20 years. I've been a businessman my entire adult life. I've been married my entire adult life. I've got three beautiful kids that, thank goodness, look like their mother. <laughs> we live down in Como. They go to a little public school down there called Como Picton. That's where we want to raise our kids. I've got the life experience, the training, and the education to be the kind of judge that you want to be. I understand the difference between making the law, arguing the law, and applying the law. A judge does this. A judge calls balls and strikes. And the strike zone can't change. That's what I'll do. But here's one thing that's most important. A good judge remembers that there is a judge that's higher than he from whom he gets discernment, wisdom, Mercy and justice. And the thing I strive for more than anything in my life is to have that great praise, well done, good and faithful servant. That's what a good judge strives to be. Folks, my record in the legislature demonstrates that I'm conservative. I will hold the line and I won't be an activist like a lot of judges are. One of the reasons we're in this redistricting mess right now is because of activism among federal judges. We got to make sure that we put somebody on the bench that understands that they apply the law and that's all they do. If that's the kind of judge that you want, that's the kind of judge I am. I would appreciate your vote. My name is Erwin Kane. I'm running for 62nd District Court. Thank you very much. Okay, right now we're going to take just a little bit of break for you to get to get your coffee and stuff. That's what, normally we do that all first, but since I had these gentlemen that was having to leave, go ahead and get you a cup of coffee, get you a whatever, they, ladies got some stuff back here, and then come sit back down and then we'll get the ball rolling on the, the other candidates because we've got several of them here tonight. We've got that it's going to be speak, so if you will, go on and, and get, you, get you something to refresh me. If y'all will find you a seat, please. We, we're going to get this going. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead. I've got another gentleman here that's also got the same event to go to in, in uh, Greenville. Uh, and he is running for the second uh, district of the state house. Uh, he will be Dan's opponent in the primary. He's uh, uh, Mr. George Alexander. Uh, George, if you will come up and give us a little history about yourself. I'm I'm just out of that age, so I've got a little boy. In fact, I'll tell you a funny story about my little boy. He's four and a half, and I was going to talk about what a wonderful day of weather we had, and I'm sure glad it's not raining like it has been the last few days, but yesterday morning I was driving him to pre-K school, and it's just raining up a storm, and there's, you know, water on the streets and in the, in the uh, bar ditches, and I turned to him in the back, his name is George too, and I said, George, look at all those cows out there in that rain. He said, Daddy, it's come a regular frog washer. And I thought, where did he hear something like that? They say funny things. Listen, I want to tell you how much I appreciate the invite to come speak to you tonight. My name is George Alexander. I am running for State District 2, which is, as you as, if you heard, has been reconfigured. Uh, the new district, as we understand it, at least, is going to be Hopkins, Hunt, and Van Zandt County. 
I grew up in Greenville and, and well, Hunt County and Raines County. Been here all my life. I'm sixth generation from, actually from Raines County, or my dad, my dad claims anyway. Uh, I grew up in Greenville, went to school in Greenville, and then went to high school in Emory. Went to school at the University of Texas, came back after I got a law degree, and I've been practicing law in Greenville and Raines County and basically the surrounding counties for 20 years. Uh, got a, as I was telling you, I've got a family. I've, my wife is Robin Alexander. She's a banker at Cypress Bank in Commerce, Texas. She's the branch manager and vice president. She grew up in Commerce. I've got a, two kids in elementary, one in elementary school and one in seventh grader. Three, three kids total, all in public schools. Um, I'm somebody also, I, I've got the, my family has title business in Raines County and Van Zandt County and in Wood County in Mineola. So I'm somebody who has a long background of businesses, creating jobs, maintaining jobs. I'm someone, every morning when after I get through dropping off my kids, I have to go open my door, in my office, let the employees in. I have to worry about the taxes I gotta pay, paying my debts, uh, the, uh, you know, the everyday business issues of a small business. I'm a conservative small businessman and I think someone who has those actual characteristics, actual business experience, is someone that we need in Austin to lead us because I have a vested interest and have invested my time in the community in this district or in Hunt County. And I think I'm someone who brings those unique characteristics. And when we're considering legislation, whether it's legislation for taxes or for education, it's something that I have experience with and when, if, if, uh, you know, if the legislation deals with regulations and uh, placing more regulations on our small businesses, it hits me in my back pocket just like it does y'all. And I'm someone who brings those characteristics to uh, this race. And I ask for your support. And I've got a website. I've passed out cards to most everybody. But if you don't have one, I'd be happy to give one to you. My website is uh, www.alexanderforhouse.com. And I'd love to talk to any of those I haven't already talked to tonight, and I sure appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Hey, George. Boy, we're proud you're able to be here. Come back again. Thank you. Okay, I think we're going to start now with our uh, constable candidates. Uh, I, I didn't draw straws or anything to see who'd go first, so I don't care. You boys can fight it out. But I... We got Bill, Bill Allen, and John Beto, both uh, running for uh, Constable of Precinct Two, or, or Precinct Two Constable, I believe it is, in uh, Hopkins County. And so, Bill, looks like you're going to get the lead off. Ben. Thank you, Donnie. Yeah, I told somebody I was coming down here to South Taylor to give a speech, and they said, "Isn't that where your opponent lives?" And I said, "Well, pretty close." They said, "Well, in other words, you're kind of heading into the belly of the beast." And I said, "I guess." Anyhow, good evening. My name is Bill Allen, and I'm a candidate for the Republican nomination for Constable Precinct 2 in Hopkins County. Uh, Constable Precinct 2 is different than commission, Commissioner Precinct 2. It's Commissioner Precincts 3 and 4. Why it's done that way, I'm not quite sure, but it is. <laughs> um, I'm not new to the Republican Party. As a matter of fact, I'm a former chairman of the Hopkins County Republican Party. Uh, back when I was chairman, I don't think we could have got this many people together in the whole county. I'm glad things have changed. I've been a part of local law enforcement for the past 12 years. I'm a licensed master peace officer, which is the highest certification you can get. Uh, I've patrolled the county as a reserve deputy, sometimes as much as 520 hours a year uh, donating my time to the county. Presently work for the sheriff's office as a transport deputy and where I pick up prisoners on our warrants and also uh, do extraditions. I also assist with courthouse security and bailiff duties, you know, when necessary. I've been on the sheriff's posse since 1999 and I'm now heading up the posse as their captain. In addition to my work in law enforcement, I also have operated a real estate business in Sulphur Springs since 1979. This is not your traditional real estate business, but one that specializes in farm and ranch and commercial real estate appraisals. 
I've made appraisals for both buyers and sellers of properties, for bankruptcy and divorce proceedings, uh, for estate purposes. And in doing this work, I found that treating people with respect helps to get the job done. I've also testified as an expert witness in district court and federal court, and have been appointed by the district court to appraise and divide property, and also been appointed as a special commissioner to hear condemnation suits uh, for that court. I've also uh, been appointed by the federal bankruptcy court to sell property uh, for a trustee. When you do this kind of work and have to testify in court as an expert witness, it's very important to make sure the job is done right, just as it is as a constable. I've become quite familiar with the procedures of civil courts, and this experience would be valuable as a constable because he also has to work with the civil courts and with both sides in civil matters. The constable in Hopkins County is a peace officer for the JP court and is responsible for serving papers for it and carrying out the orders of, the, of that court and also to act as its bailiff and also bailiff for the district court and for the county court at law uh, whenever they call, if they call on you. It is important to read the court's papers and do exactly as, as they say. Uh, you don't let your personal feelings, even if it's against what you feel personally should be done, you do what the court orders you to do. Uh, sometimes this won't get you many friends. As I said before, being respectful to people is best when possible. In the course of the constable duties, he will come across people with outstanding warrants. They need to be arrested on those warrants and put in jail. I'm also a firm believer in community policing, which is basically just being a deterrent to crime by being seen keeping an eye on the community. This can be done going to or from town or while you're doing your job. I believe that I bring a little different experience to this election. I've learned how to work with the people of Hopkins County in different areas, and I have a pretty good idea of how they expect to be treated. It is my goal to become the next constable for Hopkins County, Constable Precinct 2, and I would appreciate your support. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bill.